I, I, I should begin by announcing that I too like Ike. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> he is my favorite, the favorite president of my entire lifetime. Uh, I don't know if there's so much reflection on his uh, brilliance as a chief executive as the, uh, the dismal failure of some of the people who followed him, uh, particularly the, uh, uh, the, the current uh, cretinous head of state. Uh, <laughs> well, I hope we'll be rid of next year. Uh, I, I would like to begin my remarks by thanking Eric Stratigos, who um, is uh, uh, subsidizing my presence. Um, I am especially delighted since, uh, since Eric and I are friends and see each other all the time, uh, at least once a month, um, at a Japanese bistro, which is about uh, half a mile from my house. And because of my advanced age, Eric is nice enough to drive all the way from York, uh, Pennsylvania, about 25 miles to meet me. Um, I had no idea that he was going to sponsor me, but um, I, I shall gladly accept uh, his act of kindness. Um, <clears throat> I, I feel a little bit out of my element, as I tell people speaking on an economic subject, <clears throat> since by training, um, I am an historian of political movements and European social intellectual history. Um, but I am interested in the topic that I intend to address, uh, which is uh, set the, uh, uh, the plan for, for digital currency uh, that will be distributed by federal banks. <clears throat> I, 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 as my remarks should make clear, I am not very happy with the prospect of that happening. Um, and uh, one of the things that sort of sharpened my interest is that the November issue of our magazine, which I'm editor-in-chief, Chronicles, will deal with the future of the American dollar. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this sort of got my mind uh, focused on digital currency after I read uh, an article that was very critical of it in the, in the Wall Street Journal. <clears throat> and I did further research, um, and the, the upshot of which is the presentation that you are about to hear. Um, allow me to begin my remarks with a broad generalization. Whatever the modern self-described liberal democratic administrative state claims to be doing in the name of disadvantaged people is intended primarily and perhaps exclusively to increase government control. <clears throat> Further, whatever the same regime purports to be making, uh, purports to be making our lives more comfortable more agreeable, we may assume that our freedom and property rights are under assault. Therefore, when I read about a, an executive order issued by the Biden administration last year regarding a plan for digital currency, <clears throat> I naturally suspected something quite dire. A story that appeared in the New York Times on July 22, 2021, describing a plan to help the unbanked engage in financial transaction, told the discriminating reader all he had to know about government-run digital currency. <clears throat> Banks right now throw at just about anyone who enters their facilities, save for the most unreliable deadbeats, the chance to access their services. How many people out there just don't have the means of filling out a banking application because of some insurmountable difficulty? <clears throat> possibly about as many humans as those who can't show voter identification but feel excluded <laughs> from the democratic process if they can't have their votes for the Democratic Party certified and then perhaps counted twice. <clears throat> Another clue about the government's intention in pushing central bank digital currency, CBDCs, while cutting back on the use of paper money is that this policy is being introduced bigly to use President Trump's term, in China, <laughs> a country hardly known for its high regard for personal liberties. Chinese are no longer required to trade in paper yuan, but can access electric allocation of credit, which allow them to buy commodities and engage in business transaction. <clears throat> a similar process would be open to us in this country, supposedly, if central banks, on instruction from the government, were authorized to issue digital currencies. Although we might be uh, told differently, sooner or later it might become uh, feasible under the new arrangement to ditch paper currency entirely. <clears throat> and there have been plans like this discussed in other countries, in Germany in particular, I've been reading about this, <clears throat> and the, you know, a, a plan that would really cut back 
on, uh, on paper currency in favor of digital currency is something being considered by the German government at the present time. We'll then carry out our, all our financial dealings electronically with government-issued electronic currency and receive electronically issued compensations for our labor. A further benefit of this innovation, or so I've been assured, is that it wouldn't be necessary under the new system to worry about non-authorized digital currency like Bitcoin. The government and central banks would be making a safer product available to us, which would benefit particularly the unbanked. We should also hope that Bitcoin would then vanish as a fake alternative to real, that is, government-guaranteed digital currency. <clears throat> the problem with this argument is what it fails to reveal. Central bank digital currency can expand the market for non-authorized credit because it will drive investors to operate outside the purview of Big Brother. It is precisely the government's involvement in digital currency that will cause traders and in investors to look for alternative means of issuing credit and even creating makeshift currency <clears throat> without having the government breathe down their backs. The government's intention to control financial markets and investment through this innovation should be obvious. Who invests where, how much, and when <clears throat> will depend on obtaining the needed capital from state bureaucrats, perhaps under the influence of party functionaries. The attempt to present uh, CBDCs as a courtesy that the state will be providing grateful citizens is patent nonsense. The government's digital currency issued through central banks will more likely help concentrate financial activity in the hands of the state. Government officials will then drone on about equity while extending electronic credit to some but not others. This will have the predictable effect of creating clandestine financial activity. Uh, Eswar Prasad, an economist at Cornell, <clears throat> and the author of the bestseller, The Future of Money, can hardly be accused of being a right-winger. Prasad is a frequent contributor at Brookings and seems generally in favor of extensive government economic planning. But when it comes to government-run digital currency, he points out its downside, even while noting this plan may reflect a noble purpose of banking inclusion. There's an obvious issue of privacy, according to, um, <clears throat> according to Prasad. Quote, a digital currency could allow government to track every transaction a person makes, no matter how minute. Further, quote, a government could make it impossible to spend the, di the digital currency on things that the ruling party deems problematic. The government could also make transacting with certain people difficult or impossible. <clears throat> China already has a social credit system that ranks citizens uh, allorhythmically and punishes them in various ways." Unquote. Does anyone care to speculate about those political outcomes that CBDCs will likely produce? What will happen to Latin mass Catholics, or perhaps those who protest the sexual transitioning of their children, after the introduction of government-run digital currency? Does anyone in this room doubt that the government might weaponize digital currency in order to suppress opposition to its rule? Given all that we've observed of the Democrats in power since not 2021, should we imagine anything else happening in those circumstances? And why would I believe the opposition would prevent that outcome if it were allowed to win the next presidential race, which it probably won't be? The Republican record of reigning in government overreach has been something worse than anemic. From CNN, we learned the following about the eventual widespread use of digital currency. Quote, the rise of CBDCs could potentially threaten the status of the US dollar as the global reserve currency. Different countries <coughs> will have a much easier time transacting with each other directly, removing the need for the US or um, uh, SWIFT, a global financing messaging system. <clears throat> um, the argument, the takeaway here is the government is considering plans to introduce digital currency to offset the effects <clears throat> of this possible move by other major countries. But it's hard to see how government-controlled digital currency would benefit most Americans. Many of our commercial transactions are already being conducted through digitally transmitted credit, even without the state overseeing who receives what. <clears throat> An article in the Wall Street Journal on February 7, 2023 makes clear, quote, 
that a CBDC would empower the feds, but not Americans, unquote. In the end, it may pay to consider the broader context of the government's actions in the economic sphere to understand how digital currency would advance long-established political goals. Let us reflect on how the government is presently carrying out its economic task. The Biden administration, to its discredit, has already caused inflationary cycle through reckless spending and irresponsible energy policy. Biden's Secretary of the Treasury clearly lied to us when she assured the public that inflation would make more disposable income available to more American families. The removal of American energy independence was definitely not a move intended to strengthen our dollar. And the predictable effect of that disaster was to weaken our currency by putting us in the situation of having to beg other countries to sell us their energy at higher and higher prices. In a carefully researched essay for Chronicles, our foreign policy editor, Sergei Trifkovich, observes that much of the decline of the American dollar as an international currency resulted from the American government's decision to restrict the use of paper cur- of American currency, lest too many dollars fall into the hands of hostile powers. Uh, to quote Trifkovich, a backlash was both predictable and inevitable in the five years leading up to 2021. The share of the dollar in central bank reserves fell from 70% to 59%. Dollars held by non-American banks fell from 7,085 to 6,471 billion between December 2021 and December 2022. The greenbacks accounted for two-thirds of the world's monetary reserves in 2003, 55% in 2021, 44% in 2022. The decline of the 8% in the space of one year is remarkable, equal to 10 times the average annual rate of decline of the dollar's market share recorded in previous years. In all these activities, it is possible to see how the modern administrative state operates in economic affairs. It presses onward even when its policies fail. It is not deterred by these failures, but works to take even more control in the name of equity, climate change, or in the present case, the unbanked. This critical perspective makes more sense than swallowing predictable bromides about the government seeking to help the disadvantaged by introducing CBDCs. According to Prasad, slightly less than 5% of the American population lacks, lacks banking access. We might also consider in this vein what Michael Rechtenwald designates in Google Archipelago as governmentalities, agencies that appear to have an independent existence, but which function as extensions of the administrative state and execute state functions. The most conspicuous of these governmentalities, in my view, uh, is the mass media, which define and affirm the woke state religion and which assails any interest that stands athwart the expansion of the central government. Ditto for major corporations which serve equally the state and the state religion and which receive in return government contracts and the privilege of not being investigated for such grave offenses as allowing employees to misgender or failing to produce the stipulated LBGT uh, quota for the workplace. Universities and institutes are likewise included among Rechtenwald's governmentality, something that should not surprise anyone who has bothered to notice these entities. It is also hard to miss the fact that Brookings Institute, whose fellows and staffs move in and out of government, have been among the most enthusiastic advocates of CBDCs. According to Brookings, CBDCs would facilitate international commerce, reverse de-dollarization, and contrary to putative misinformation, not be accompanied by the gradual removal of paper currency. And least of all must we fear in this instance further government control of financial activity. State actors are supposedly helping us engage in safe transactions during a peaceful transition to a more global economy. Another obvious example of government agencies claiming to be dealing with finance but punishing enemies and rewarding friends is the IRS. This may be an even more brazen partisan actor than the Federal Reserve, because there is nothing clandestine about how our tax collectors harass and shake down opponents of the state party. <clears throat> the Obama administration engaged in this activity uninterruptedly for years with impunity, and I'm still waiting to see if Lois Lerner and other IRS officials who targeted 
conservative religious organizations and Republican and libertarian critics and subjected them to painful audits that reveal that most minor tax infractions will be brought to justice. Perhaps we shouldn't count on that happening. Lerner and her associates were doing the bidding of the state party, which treats financial activities as a mere means of extending its power. We made note with satisfaction that some presidential candidates, namely Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Robert Kennedy Jr., have expressed opposition to government-controlled digital currency as a tool for allowing the federal state to restrict our financial activity, to gather information on spending, and to deny financial resources to those who displease the state party and its minions. Minnesota Congressman Tom Emmer, a member of the House Financial Service Committee, has gone even further in opposing this plan, <clears throat> which is already in the works. Emmer is sponsoring a bill that would deny the Federal Reserve the right to produce or manage the, uh, uh, the, the, the digital currency. According to Emmer, this simple legislation, quote, stops the administrative state under President Biden from introducing a financial surveillance tool that could undermine the very essence of our way of life, <clears throat> unquote. The assumption is that our way of life has still not been undermined, which may be an overly optimistic conclusion. <laughs> On May 12, 2023, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill that forbids the use of CBDCs in his state. The explanation accompanying the signing is that the governor and state legislature oppose any attempt by the federal government to oversee our disposal of money. <clears throat> Equally telling is this admonition against the immediate introduction of CBDCs issued strangely enough, well not strangely enough, but by the American Banker Association on September 13. Issuance of CBDC would fundamentally change the relationship between citizens and the Federal Reserve, undermining the important role banks play in financial intermediation and exacerbate the economic and liquidity crisis and impede the transmission of monetary policy. Uh, in all fairness, it must be said that the Federal Reserve is not rushing at full throttle to introduce digital currency in a report issued in January 2022. Federal board members dwelled on the technical barriers that prevented the completion of the currency project in the near term. Uh, according to, <clears throat> to, the, uh, to the Federal Reserve report, while a CBDC could provide a safe digital payment option for households and business um, as the payment system continues to evolve <clears throat> and may result in faster uh, payment options between countries. There will also be downsides. They include um, uh, how to ensure uh, a, CDC, uh, a CBDC would preserve monetary and financial stability as well as complement existing means of payment. Most of the political report um, uh, most of the political support for uh, digital currency, government-run digital currency, let us make this clear, is not coming from the Federal Reserve. Uh, it is coming from the Democratic Party um, and uh, from President Biden's handlers. Um, but accord according to the, the Fed, and this is sort of surprising, uh, they believe this should be done in a measured way without creating financial instability. Not surprisingly, the federal report never mentions the obvious concern that the plan would put the government firmly in control of our financial activity. We are also given the misleading impression in this report, uh, which I have not read in its, uh, to you in its entirety, that the lockdown was something that just happened. The last time I checked, post-democratic governments almost everywhere in the Western world imposed those dictatorial measures. As a governmentality, however, the Fed who issued this report wisely avoided any mention of certain indelicate matters. The cheerleading for this innovation is coming from the White House and from progressive legislators like Maxine Waters. Waters in particular seems dazzled by how expeditiously the Chinese are moving um, beyond their one-time dependence on paper money while centralizing all financial activities in the hands of the state. Since worst case scenarios <coughs> usually turn out to be true, <coughs> When we're talking about public administration, whose officials, as we know, vote overwhelmingly for the left in the extension of public control, we can understand why this cheerleading is coming from a leftist legislator. Waters and other congressional advocates of CBDCs have taken the side whether their politics would drive them. For the rest of us, however, it may be good to keep in mind, with regard to government-run digital currency, what Ronald Reagan 
Once declared to be the most frightening words in the English language, they are, I've come from the government and I'm here to help you. Thank you.